First of all, I wanted to say thank you so much for clicking on this video. And for all my folks in the States, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. For everyone else, I hope you had a great week. I'm glad to have you guys here. If you could, hit that like button. And uh, that really, really helps the videos. The last time we did that, it was crazy. And it really, really helped my channel. And I really, really appreciate it because one of the things I try to do here is kind of get eyes on species of animals that a lot of people haven't seen before. And if it's not species, then it's different mutations like this guy. This is the brain. This is a snow tessera corn snake. And this guy is actually going up on three years old. So we tried to breed him last year and we just didn't really have him fit into any of our projects. But coming up this year, we have some girls that are gonna be perfect for him. So we're finally gonna get to pass on his genetics here and make some snow tessers, which are just awesome, awesome snakes. So I'm pumped about that. But I went to the October Tinley show in the Chicago area. How can I go to one of the best reptile shows in the world and not come home with something? Well, if I was gonna come home with something, it was gonna be something that really, really caught my eye. And I ended up seeing this guy. This here is produced by a guy named Larry Keller of Prairie Land Herpticulture. And he's been around for quite a long time. I actually got a few old reptiles magazines from him and he had ads in there from the mid 90s. And you know, he originated a lot of the really, really rare Asian rat snakes, things like the hunter flower rat snake and just a lot of really, really cool species. So he has some really, really great animals and this is one of them. This is actually a corn snake but this is what he calls orange. And to me, this looks like some type of Amel sun-kissed that somehow is orange, but it is just a showstopper for sure. You guys have seen my reverse fluorescent Okatee, which I believe is a result of the red factor in it, and he's really bright. So this girl will really, really up the game as far as bright animals that I have in my collection. Bright animals that we're gonna be able to breed in the future. And I hope that the camera can get it just how orange this animal is. And the fact that it's plain orange and the saddle colors aren't really red or anything like that in normal AML, it's still orange. So it looks like when the white banding comes in there, it just like gives it splashes of white. It doesn't even look like it has normal saddle patterns like a regular corn snake would. It looks like it's just a bright orange snake that's kind of spattered with random white blotches. And this snake just kind of blows my mind every single time. So here is another Tinley pickup. And Tinley Park is a place where you can find animals that you just would not find anywhere else. And where else was I going to go to a reptile show and see a Slowinski's corn snake? This is not a corn snake at all, but it is a separate species of rat snake. It is a Pantherophis slowinskii. And Pantherophis slowinskii look very much like emery rat snakes. So if you've seen our big emery rat snake, they are pretty similar. And people thought that these were just an integrate or basically a naturally occurring hybrid between a corn snake and an emery rat snake. Or I've even heard emery rat snake and gray rat snake because a lot of where these occur, they actually overlap there. But uh, DNA studies were done and in 2002, this animal was awarded full species status and it was named after the famed herpetologist Dr. Joseph Bruno Slowinski who had lost his life a year earlier on September 11th, 2001 actually due to a crepe bite when he was doing field research and they named this snake after him because it occurs in his favorite state of Louisiana as well as they hit a little bit on the Texas border there where Texas borders Louisiana and then there's a weird adjunct population up in Arkansas. So these are actually the newest known species of rat snake to occur in North America because if you think about it people have been researching North American colubrids for quite a long time so it's pretty rare to have a new species especially something as you know recent as 2002. So these are really really cool species to have. I mean, some people may not think that there's much to look at here, but I think they are awesome. There is one mutation in them that's called Silverleaf. It's a pattern mutation. It is really cool looking. This is actually possible het Silverleaf, but really I just wanted to get 
the original form, the natural form, the wild type of the Slowinski's corn snake. You may see them in the hobby called Kasachi, but I find that kind of confusing. And the name derives from them being found by the Kasachi National Forest over there on the border of Texas and Louisiana. But I like to call them and give them the namesake of Slowinski because of the story I told you earlier. And so this is my Slowinski's corn snake or Slowinski's rat snake. I've heard that too. I mean, common names are common names. It's not set in stone any of the time, especially when you get to the rare species. And so I usually try to cut through the confusion and just call them Pantherophis Slowinskii. While I have the chance, why not appease our ball python fans? So this is my male Ultramel ball python. This is one of just a couple ball pythons left from my dad's collection. He actually gave them to me so that I can sell them. He was looking to get out of it because he just didn't have the time and space really to mess with his ball pythons as much anymore. So we're out looking for good homes for these guys. And so we do have a couple ball pythons for sale, but I've been kind of enjoying having them around even though uh, this guy's eating live and so is another one. So I gotta go get live rodents, which I'm not really used to because all of my other snakes actually take frozen thawed easily. So kind of a little bit of a pain, but this is a beautiful, beautiful snake, let's be honest. So Ultramel is a recessive gene and uh, I know a lot of people don't work with it that much because banana came around and, and this was just a more of a long-term project because recessive genes, obviously if you have this guy, you breed him to a normal female, then you just get all het Ultramel. So you'll get all normal looking babies, but they carry the gene of Ultramel. And then you gotta breed back one of those animals back to this animal in order to get your visual. So there's an extra step in there. When you tap a banana, you can just take a banana male, breed it to a female, and you'll get some bananas. But I think the extra step is worth it because these don't get the black freckles the bananas do. And I find the color to just be a little bit richer. And then I find the brownish kind of more golden color across the back here. And I just, I find it a little bit more appealing than the banana to be honest. And it's just a really, really cool snake. So here's an Ultramel ball python. So while we're at it, why not show you another corn snake? This here is a creamsicle tessera. So this is a hybrid snake, mind you. It is an Amel corn snake, emery rat snake hybrid. And of course it has the tessera gene in it. And uh, just a really, really beautiful girl. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with her because I don't have any creamsicle male stuff and I don't really wanna go mixing her around with whatever, so I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with her, but I really, really love her. She's really, really beautiful. She's just a really, really cool snake. It gives it just this hard to explain, but just a really soft kind of pastel orange rather than a lot of your darker oranges that you'll get in your normal AML corn snake, so. I'm glad to have this girl, not sure what I'm gonna do with her, but just a beautiful, beautiful snake that I'm not sure that I've showed you before. So I hope you enjoyed that. Just wanted to show off a few things that I don't think I've ever shown you guys before. And I thought I'd finish it with our great Emery rat snake or Great Plains rat snake. Amazing animals, don't ever overlook these animals as far as pets go. Emery rat snakes are just as gentle typically as your corn snake, if not more. And you can find them at a really, really reasonable price, especially the wild types. And there are a few mutations in them. There are Amels that I know of, Anneries that I know of, as well as Snows, of course, that I know of. And there's probably more, but I just haven't really. <laughs> 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 There's probably more, but I just haven't really seeked them out. But really, really cool snakes, really, really gentle, and they get about the same size as a corn snake. Maybe just a little bit bigger. This is a male. Males typically get a little bit bigger, but beautiful, beautiful animals. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, subscribe, and if you made it this far, you're on the team.